Well, hello, folks. Good morning. Top of the morning to you. Hey, today what we're going to be talking about is the differences between fluorocarbon, monofilament, and braid. And uh, there's not one better than the other, but we're going to go over through the differences and some of the things maybe you need to consider before choosing any of these types of lines. So let's get right to it. We're going to go right into the fishing. But before we do that, Let's put some big fish in the boat today. We're gonna have fun. It's morning, it's cool, it's July. I mean, I can't remember the last time it was this cool during the July. We've had a lot of rain, but we're gonna have a great time. Thanks for joining. Please subscribe and share the videos. Crappie fishing, folks, you gotta love the thump. We're doing nothing but jigs today. Here we go. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing, partnered up with these fantastic companies. All right, thanks for joining me. This is gonna be a little bit different episode. You know, we talk a lot about live scope, side imaging, all these fancy stuff, but today we're talking about something simple and very uh, elementary. Um, we're talking about just the line, the different types of line that are available to you. Check it out, very informative uh, episode. You're gonna enjoy it. All right, there's a great fish caught on fluorocarbon. Very reactive. Man, is he really gold? Look at him right now. Could it be a gold crappie? No. They're a little golder than that, but boy, I'll tell you what. They've lightened up because of all this rain. Beautiful looking fish right there. Man. All right, so let's start off with monofilament. Hmm, let's get a reel out of here. Monofilament. Well, heck, here's a bunch of line right here. Very important that you don't dispose of your line in the water. It can wrap around props and turn it into a disaster. So this is monofilament right here, okay? A lot of stretch on monofilament. It's easy to work with, it work with it's very flexible, and it's inexpensive. It's probably the go-to in terms of crappie fishing without a doubt. I'll tell you, there is no but. It's a good line. Monofilament is awesome, inexpensive. You can go buy a spool of this, Mr. Crappie, you name it, doesn't matter what brand you buy. I'm a high believer in high vis, but look at the stretch. The stretch is just really good. Eventually it will break like that, but good stretch. You can feel it stretching and inexpensive, high vis. Check out monofilament. Um, just a great line to start with, without a doubt. The other thing about monofilament, it's easy to cast because it's so flexible. Um, it's smooth, doesn't get tangled up very much, easy to cast. So all types of, I mean, whether you're jigging, trolling, monofilament really can fill the, fill the whole deal. It's, it's, it's without a doubt the line that you probably should start on. You're gonna hear a lot of people talking about braid. Um, a lot of people do talk about fluorocarbon, but those are kind of uh, advanced uh, lines I like to say. So everybody should start with monofilament in my opinion. And I honestly still fish with monofilament all right, so let's talk about fluorocarbon, okay? Uh, low visibility, it's always gonna be thinner than your monofilament uh, for the most part. It's stronger, low stretch. So this is an example of fluorocarbon. A lot of people are gonna say that it's a, little, a lot more sensitive, um, and it is, without a doubt. There's just less stretch. You're gonna feel a bite pretty immediate. And uh, now, what are some of the drawbacks? Drawbacks are gonna be, it's expensive. Um, I've also found that, here it is right here, it looks very similar, uh, but you can definitely feel that does not have the stretch that mono has. Um, cost, it sinks, so you get used to a fall rate that's a little different, so use that to your advantage. This stuff uh, sinks very quickly, where monofilament will actually float, I didn't tell you that. You know, obviously another thing about fluorocarbon, it's not strength, not strength is incredible. You do want to wet it. I find that it singes fluorocarbon way quicker than anything else. So, and it's, a lot of that is due to the smaller diameter of the line itself. So you look at the difference of a six pound mono versus a six pound fluorocarbon, you're going to see a much smaller diameter line, which I think is great because your fish are going to, you're going to see it a lot less. Because it doesn't absorb water, it's a lot less resistant to UV rays and wear and tear and abrasion, those type of things. So very strong line that will last you, should last you a very long time. But again, the expense is up there, so you have to decide whether or not it's for you. It's definitely a different feel in terms of a bite. When you get a bite, set the hook, it's very low stretch, but it does have a little bit of stretch, which is nice. I think it's a great medium between braid and mono. That's what most people would say. And uh, I kind of like fluorocarbon. I, I kind of go back and forth between it and mono. 
<laughs> All right, so the last one is, of course, braided line, okay? I am no expert at braided line. In fact, I barely use it. I'm using it today. I've got it out, uh, actually, the last couple days, to be honest with you. Got it on my prototype rod right now. And I, in some respects, I like it. I like how it feels. It is immediate feedback. There is no stretch, folks. No stretch whatsoever, and it is extremely durable. Very difficult to cut. In other words, if you get hung up, there's a better chance of you bending your hook back than ever breaking the line. Um, this is only six pound braid, and I'm very impressed by the diameter of it. It's, it's just super thin. Um, so far, it's my favorite braid. This is the um, this is the P line braid. Braid is you know a very exciting product. When you get a bite, it's immediate when you set the hook when you bring it up. There is no stretch, no nothing. Now I think it does. I have noticed that it's hurt in terms of maintaining the hook set. So I have lost more fish up at the surface with braid than I have with mono or fluoro. And I believe that's because when I set the hook, there's still that stretch maintaining that hook in the, in the fish's mouth. Whereas this guy right here, I set the hook, boom, there's a lack of pull on the fish, so to speak, to maintain that, a really good solid pull on that fish. I just have noticed that I've lost a lot up on the surface. So, But with that said, I'm still trying out this six pound braid line. And so you'll see it from time to time on the boat. I'm giving it a whirl. Like I said, I'm not an expert at it. It is expensive. Braid is not cheap, is not cheap stuff. It's not meant for every application. I think a lot of people use leaders on braids because I do think that braid could be more visible to the fish. So using a monofilament or a fluorocarbon leader will allow you to ha get that stretch that those offer, but also the tactile feel that you're gonna have with the, with the braid, excuse me. And I haven't gone there yet, so I'm gonna go over the uni knot at some point here shortly because personally I need to learn the uni knot because I think a lot of people are tying mono or fluorocarbon leaders to this, these braids set up when, we're live, when they're live scoping. So right now I've just got it straight, straight right to a, a jig and it probably is affecting the bite. The fish probably can see it, but if they're hungry at the end of the day, I think they, they're gonna eat those baits regardless. So, so mono, filament, mono filament, fluorocarbon and braid, three options you have when you get started fishing. And like I said, I do believe that starting with a, with a mono is really the, a great great start and it teaches you a lot about line then buy maybe a small school spool of uh, fluorocarbon try it out check it out see if you like it it's definitely a more sensitive line i like fluorocarbon just a little bit more expensive you have to decide at that point is it worth that extra cost for fluorocarbon is it adding that much more to your fishing experience and a lot of guys use you know fluorocarbon because of its strength the braid because of its strength when they're live scoping and they're going to be in that boat by themselves they want to be able to hoist those fish right up into the boat but i'll tell you you can do the same thing with mono i mean i'm just being honest with you it's just the feel that you get from one or the other uh, i'm not trying to sell against braid by any stretch because who knows i might uh, end up using it like i said i'm no not that experienced with it but i'm just going to give you the experiences that i've had and that is that it gets tangled up a lot on the tip of the uh, the rods right here and a lot of people have when i've made that comment before they'll say well this line doesn't do it as much this line doesn't do it as much i've tried them all at the end of the day they have some level of wanting to get tangled up very easily and uh, you can't shake it off with a mono or a fluoro you can shake off that tangle up at the tip of your rod and move on and go keep fishing nope not with this you have to bring it back you have to untangle it and then move forward with braid. So that's kind of been my experience. So I'm probably not the guy trying to, I'm definitely not trying to sell you on braid, uh, but I'm still trying it out because I'm just like anybody else out there. I want to try different stuff and have, have that experience, so. So a lot of solid information in regards to the lines. And I can tell you right now, I'm kind of torn between mono and, and fluorocarbon. Haven't really decided which direction I go. I have a little bit both uh, in my boat at all times. But monofilament, you know, cost-wise is just so positive. Uh, it's so good that it's really hard to get away from a mono uh, versus anything else. But I got to tell you, I see the benefits of fluorocarbon and I see the benefits of braid. So it'll be interesting over, the, over time what I end up going with. But... When I'm by myself, I definitely need something strong to be able to hoist that fish into the boat. And typically I lean towards fluorocarbon and I have definitely been tinkering around with the braid. So.
All right, folks, that's going to end it today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I really do appreciate you and have a great, great summer. Good fish. Thanks for watching another three pound fishing episode sponsored by these great companies.